What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. It's good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating the drink. Look at damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no. And yes, please no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people? What's up? It's me, LT27, and I am back. We're back for another review. This is going to be our review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 5, Episode 12. And I forgot what the title of the episode, whatever the title of the episode is, it'll be somewhere around. The title will be somewhere. Whatever. I'm real late on this um, review, but that's because priorities. Lovecraft Country is more of a priority than these whores. And now that Lovecraft Country is over, I probably will be a little earlier with the reviews, okay? God, get over it. You'll be all right. I mean, what are we talking about? Anyway, let's get right down into it. We start off with Wendy. Um, she's at home talking to her husband. Um, and they're planning on having this sip and see for their daughter. It's supposed to be a whole American slash Nigerian affair. And they're going to do all of that. And, um, okay, that's real cute. I, I was just... You know, I haven't bought Wendy since she first came on. Like, I saw Chinks in the Armor way back when. So, I'm still trying to see it for her. But, mm, the jury is still out and it's not looking well for her. Anyway, she they talk about the fact that her husband is still at odds with... Her husband's family is still at odds with him and um, her. And they're not coming around. They're not talking to them. He only talks to, like, maybe a couple of his brothers and sisters but the majority of his brothers and sisters still don't talk to him his mom doesn't communicate with him and so forth and i still feel like there's a whole nother element or angle to this story than what we're getting from wendy and him there's a whole nother side um i don't know that we'll ever get that because wendy and her husband have the benefit of being on the show so they could just put their side out there put it out there put it out there put it out there without giving us the benefit of hearing what the other side has to say about it or what their experience was or how they got to the point where they are. So, and then at the, at the same time, it, it it's so hypocritical because Wendy is so beholden to her mother and she's always about how my mom feels. One of her mom's acceptance, one of her mom's, one of her mom's approval, but you don't want that I'm not going to say she doesn't want that, but it doesn't seem like you're putting that same energy into making sure that your husband has that. At the end of the day as well, what I would have done is if I would have seen that both parents couldn't have gotten it together, then it would have been a situation where, listen, we're not going to pick and choose. We are a, a marriage unit, one couple. And if both um, sets of parents can't do it, then none of it. If y'all can't find a way to get along, then, then y'all won't just be a part. None of y'all will be a part of our life. But I don't think that it should be, oh, we're going to have Wendy's family and not the guy's family. And like I said, I don't know everything that's going on with it, but I feel like it's, I, you know, it's something. I can't put my finger on it, but if I could, I would have to wash it. Okay. Anyway, Ashley and Michael, they go out to see this therapist. And when they sat down with the therapist or whatever, you ever talk to someone and you go to, you know, um, have a conversation with someone and you want to ask them um, questions and things like that. And everything you say, they just got a quick answer, quick answer for everything. It's like, they're not really trying to hear you. They're not really trying to take your advice. They're not really trying to really receive what you're saying. They feel like they have all of the answers and they don't need the help of anybody else. And so that's what I kind of felt like, Michael. Michael, anytime the um, counselor says something, this, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Like he was just rambling off answers. And while they may have sound, while they may have been sounded like good answers or they may have um, been answers where that someone wanted to hear, you are here in therapy because you don't have all of the answers because you're not doing all of the right things. And and it, he just came off as someone who wanted to ramble off all of these great answers, let you know, he, listen, I got all of the answers. I, I know what the problem is. I know everything. And just... Let me do it, which means that you aren't going to be receptive to having somebody tell you what's wrong or helping you. And if that's the case, then why are you here? If that's the case, why are you even in the predicament that you're in? That's a whole different story. So that was that. And Ashley, I just, you know, money is an incredible thing. And money will, money will show someone's true, um, it'll show 
of, of someone's true self and what their true inner core and soul is. And the more I see Ashley, hold on, let me have a drink of Gatorade before I say what I got to say. It might come out better. The more I see Ashley, the more I see a deep, dark, demented soul there to allow yourself to be treated that way. Um, knowing that you have a child um, and knowing that Michael is then going to be the example for your son as to how your son should treat the person that he chooses to be with later on in life. That's a deleterious um, example, to say the least. I mean... And then sometimes I, I say she has a, a dark, demented soul because even sometimes how she the things that she says sometimes and how she goes in on people about things that don't involve her or situations she has no idea about. Yeah, she seems like the type of person who I probably could not be friends with. Like Ashley, Ashley is not someone who I could be friends with. Like she, mm, yeah, I don't know. Because she is, she knows what's going on and she is voluntarily subjecting herself and her child to all of that. If she like it, I love it. But mm, it tells a, the story about who you are as a person and uh, what comes out of your, let me shut up. Moving on, Wendy called Ashley to invite her to the sip and see, but made it a point to say she's not inviting Monique. She claimed that it was because um, a whole lot of the ladies don't like uh, Monique. You should just, uh, you know, say what you say and mean what you mean. You don't like her no more. Go ahead and say what you got to say. Say it with your chest. But whatever. Wendy and Ray go and walk and talk. And they had a lot of back and forth. They, they had a lot of dialogue. But I don't know that they made any progress in their issues. I don't know that any progress was made. Um... I do think some um, important things were said, but I don't know if they have, because it's not, it's not okay just to put out there, you know, your thoughts and feelings at a certain point, you put your thoughts, feelings out there, you say how you feel, but then you have to decide um, that it's time to make steps to move forward, to put the pieces back together, to mend the fences and to make the situation better. And I don't know that they're at that point. Um, they need to seek real professional counseling um, for marriage counseling for their marriage. Um, and it needs to be someone. Well, I, I'll say like this. I didn't have a problem with the lady that came and spoke with them, but I think Ray was honest. But I think what needs, what needs to happen is if you want this help, Karen, you have to be open to hearing what Ray said. And if Ray is telling you the truth, you need to be open to it. Not that it's not going to hurt. But you shouldn't make him feel bad for telling you the truth. Like, I feel like that sometimes. I feel like she wants Ray to open up and talk to her. And then when Ray, Ray does open up and gives her authentically how he feels, she makes him feel bad about that. And that's not good either. Because then now he's not going to feel open to telling you, you know, how he feels anymore. So, yeah, they need, they need, there's a lot more. They need a lot more help um, than they even think. We then see Candace. She goes, she's in the car talking to her mama. She's going to go file criminal charges against Monique for the assault. Now, I see how I would have handled it is I wouldn't go to criminal court. Not because I don't think Monique committed a crime or I don't think Monique should go to jail. Because I definitely do. We'll get there in a second. However, I do feel like it's so much harder. The burden of proof for criminal court is so much harder than it is for civil court. Um, if I just want to sue you, baby, let's, let me tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to civil court where the burden of proof is much, um, lower. And I, um, after civil court, you get compensation. See, they ain't going to jail off of civil court. They got, they got to compensate you. And so now, you know, what I would have did was we're going to the civil court. I'm going to go ahead and sue you for everything you worked. I'm going to take one of those four good houses and baby, we're going to keep it moving because I guarantee you, you take out a civil court. They're going to give you your money every day of the week. They're going to look at the tapes, give you your money every day of the week, twice on Sundays. And you add into there, you know, the fact that you make a living off of your looks and your face and the fact that she bashed your head. To you know, a lawyer could doctor it up and make it look real serious. Girl, you should see, I think <clears throat> if it were me, that's what I would have did. We'll get to the criminal court part um, later. But <clears throat> she tells her mama she plans on prosecuting her to the fullest extent of the law. And then she talks about being upset that Karen isn't more on her side. Um, 
I can understand that because I do think Karen is double talking. I do think Karen, when the camera is on, wants to make it seem like she's neutral. But I could see Karen probably playing both sides depending on who she's talking to. Anyway, Wendy and her husband go select a venue for the sip and see. Her husband then starts to talk about talk about wanting to invite his family. Because now, and I don't think it just happened now. I think that they're talking about it now because of the show. It, but I, cause I, Because I'm sure this has happened before. But one of the sons asked the dad, why haven't I seen my grandfather? Because he talked about um, his beard. And he was like, does my grandfather have a beard? Why haven't I seen my grandfather? And that is important. Children are going to know. Okay, I saw one set of grandparents. Why am I not seeing my other set of grandparents? Children are like that. They will ask any question. And the kind of voice she has um, that they have, <clears throat> Wendy and her husband have the kind of boys that are inquisitive and they love to ask questions and they are going to do that. So I, I refuse to believe this is the first time that's been brought up. So what I'm saying is knowing that I feel like there should have been greater effort in the past to... Um, reach out to the parents to make this right, to make it better. I just don't know. Like I said, I feel like it's more to it um, than we know. We then see Ashley. She go over her Uncle Lump house. Uncle Lump now is <clears throat> a man of a particular age, but Uncle Lump is easy on the eyes. Now, let me tell y'all something. Uncle Lump wasn't, <laughs> wasn't nothing to laugh at. Now, Uncle, I was like, hey, Uncle Lump. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Ooh, I know he's a man of a particular age. That means he probably got a little piece of change over there. He's well established, honey. Mm -hmm. I could be a sugar baby. You could be a sugar daddy. Anyway, um, her mother came over um, um, to her uncle's house as well. Her mother and her uncle were talking to her. And Uncle Lump was not here for Michael. Uncle Lump gives you that, why are these people always cutting the grass when I'm making a video? I just hate it. Anyway, excuse me. Uncle um, Lump is not here for Michael. He like, listen, I, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not here for him. I'm not here for any of his antics. Why is he hiding? Why is it every time you come around us or you meet up, he's never there? Mm -mm, he's going to have to come and face the music at some point. And what I took that as, yeah, he's going to have to um, catch these good hands at some point. Because Uncle Lump did give me that if given the opportunity, he'll lay some hands on Michael. And you need, listen, I don't care, every woman... Every man is a woman. Anyway, but every woman. <laughs> Shots out to candy. Every woman needs an older brother, a father, an uncle, or somebody in the family that's that guy. That's going to be the one that be like, uh-uh, nope. Let me go ahead and get my gun. Let me go ahead and uh, have a conversation with him. You need that. You need, I don't care what you say. Every woman needs that guy in their life. Because sometimes men can be out of control and you need another man to go check a man. I was here for Uncle Love. I was here for him. Anyway, the mama was agreeing because the mama was like, yeah, he keep hiding from us. He act like he didn't want to come see us. He needs to come and see us. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if it ever happens. I hope so. I'm here for Uncle Love. here for all parts of Uncle Love. Anyway, then we get to the sip and see. Robin, who I guess is notorious for being late, decided that she was going to be early this time. It came way too early. Girl, what was that Robin had on? Now, I'm not... See, my reviews, I really don't focus on what people have on because I'm not a fashionista. I'm not a fashion guru, and I ain't... I don't have it to do with what people be having on. But even I looked at this outfit that Robin had on, like, girl, where was you going? Like, she gave me, like, it was Women's Day at um, down to the um, Kojic Church, and that was her, and her color. And you know how sometimes when it's women day, they have, Women's Day, they have the little color schemes. That was her little color scheme, pink. She gave me that. That's what she had on. Cause I was like, what is this that Robin has? Robin looked a mess. Just a damn mess. Anyway... On their way there, the other ladies started to get texts from the blogs and people texting them what was in the blogs about um, Candace pressing charges against Monique. And so they, they started to look it up and find out that she can get anywhere from five to like 12 years or something like that. So then they said, I mean, the sympathy looked nice. You know, it looked like they had a good time. Let me just get that on out the way. It looked like a great time was had by all. Uh, I forgot to mention that um, Wendy's husband sent a text to his mom to invite the family over. They never came. Honey. They never came. So the sympathy looked really good. Um, it was a nice party. You know, they did all of the traditional Nigerian things and so forth. It was really nice. So forth and so on. The mama came. Wendy's mama came with her usual antics. Her sister was there. Real nice. Okay. Now that we got all that out of the way. Um, I mean, let me say I feel bad that um, 
Eddie's, uh, this is, his name, is his name Eddie? I, I think his name is Eddie. Wendy's um, husband's family didn't come, but they, I think they have a lot more work to do. You know, you can't just be at odds with me all of this time, all of these years, and then just send me a text saying, oh, by the way, come to my thing. Bitch, you can't stand me and I can't stand you, so you send me this invite to this whatever ain't gonna make me come. That's not how this works. But whatever. They got a lot more to do in order to fix that. So, um... The, the girls, I want to, let's go back to the girls. The girls talk about the, um, yeah, because y'all see that I'm talking about the good part of my review. And you're going to bring this stinking ass lawnmower right here underneath the window, you stinking ass bitch. You. See, this is the bullshit I'm talking about. Now, if I open this window and throw a rock and bust that bitch in the head, they'll think I was wrong. But anyway, um, <laughs> they talk about the fact that, oh, we don't want Wendy to go to jail. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't talk about how awful this is. You can't talk about how horrible Wendy was. Giselle, you can't ceremoniously be bringing security to events when you go talk to her and then say, but I don't want you to um, file a charge on her and, send her, um, and have her possibly go to jail. No, that's not how this works. You can't have it both ways. That's just like any crime. If you know someone committed a crime and then you ceremoniously go to that person and say, oh, you committed this crime. You wrong for committing that crime. Um, you need to understand that uh, that's not how we live. That's not how these things work. And then say, but I don't want you to go to jail for that crime because it, they committed a the crime. They are probably going to have to face the consequences of that crime. Which may be jail time. Now, we're not saying definitively that it's jail time, but it is a possibility. Um, Let me deal with one person first. Ashley, I don't know why you opened your mouth about this situation. Ashley, you should have stayed your stinking ass to fuck quiet. Because first of all, we already know you don't see it for Candace already because of y'all previous situations, okay? You were not even there. So everything that you said was a moot point. You were not there. What are you talking about? But Ashley, 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 Ashley. You just wanted to be counted, okay? You were one of the wanted to be want to be counted bitches, okay? This or Ashley had a whole lot of smoke and a whole lot to say. And everything that you said was really you putting 20 on 10 because of your situation with Candace last um, I think it was last year or whatever season it was, when she put you out her house at the night. Now, I went back and watched that episode because so many people asked me about that episode. And I'm with Candace. Bitch, I told you to get the fuck out of my house. If you came your bitch ass in my house again, bitch, I might pull out a knife and say, hey, I told you the first time. Because now, you know, in Florida, we call it stand your ground laws. Bitch, I done put you out of my house and you still coming back in. I can stand my ground. So, Ashley, I'm not, I'm not here for Ashley. Ashley, shut your ass up, okay? Shut the fuck up. Because you have nothing to add. Nothing. Now, now that we got that whore out of the way, because she got on my last good nerve. She, Because she was like the first one to chime in. She was like the first one all loud. And she started to get real, you know, combative about it. Bitch, if you don't shut the... Girl, you better take your ass to fuck somewhere, Ashley. You better take your ass to fuck somewhere. And you need to go be working on your marriage. Like Candace told you, girl, you need to not worry about what Candace got going on. You need to be worried about what your husband got going on. Now, I was here for Candace. Candace had a quick read, you girl. Get your life in order before you try and tell me what I need to be doing. Child, because you always trying to throw out that I'm married to a millionaire, a millionaire that beats you down, not beats you down. I'm sorry, he's not abusing her. Not that I know. I'm sorry, a millionaire that cheats on you left, right, and sideways. Child, that that whole Ashley Michael situation gives me a slave and his master situation with the people descended from the Caucasus Mountains and then their um, slaves and the slaves because they get a couple extra perks thinking that they're on equal footing with the master when they're not. But that's a whole nother story and a whole nother situation that Ashley needs to get her life in order about. Anyway, <clears throat> Candace, I mean, Giselle and Robin would say, well, we don't really want um, Monique to go to jail and so forth. And I was like, mm, didn't agree. Y'all are not Candace. And I'm going to say this to you. It's one thing for y'all to say that because y'all weren't getting y'all head bashed into a table because y'all weren't getting beat in the head. But Giselle, from your antics, if you brought a security guard to the meeting with Monique, you really expect me to believe that if it happened to you, you wouldn't have pressed charges? Come on, Giselle. Come on now. Come on now. 
Why, but we already know you hurting for money anyway. So you probably looking for a reason to have somebody put hands on you so you could take them to court and sue them left, right, and sideways. I'm not here for it. I'm not here for Karen either. I told you I wasn't here for Karen when when um last episode or episode before last because I feel like Karen is sided. Now, that's the one thing I agree with Robin about. I do feel like Karen is choosing a side. She's choosing Monique's side. I do feel like that. She's trying to hang on and give the illusion that I'm still here for Candace. Candace is still my friend. But let's be clear. I get the feeling and inclination based on what I'm watching that Karen has chosen a side and it's not Candace. I just felt like I now I was here for Chris, little Chris. When little Chris looked at Ashley and said, hey, shut up, shut up. Keep your mouth closed. And I was with him because if you have an open case in criminal court, aren't you not supposed to talk about anything involving the case? Like, y'all, I know we have legal scholars that might watch my video. Y'all let me know. But I figured that if you have an open case in criminal court, you probably need to be quiet and not talk about these things. But I don't know. I could be wrong. But I wasn't here for none of them talking about stuff. You cannot tell that girl how she needs to react or what she needs to do. You, mm -mm, nope. If the girl say she busts my head into the table several times, I want to go uh, take her to court and I think she need to go to jail, then she need to go to jail. That She need to go to jail. That's just like saying somebody stole uh, money from you and you say, oh, but I don't think you need to call the police because they stole money. You know, just let it go. No, bitch, that's my belongings and they stole from me. I get to decide whether or not I want to call the police and have them sit in jail. And in this case, she was assaulted. It's not up to y'all to decide whether or not she should. No, it's up to Candace. And I'm telling you, I promise you all, the way, especially Wendy and Giselle, I don't know about Robin, but I know Wendy and Giselle, if y'all were Candace and somebody had did that to y'all, you better believe they would have already hit, the charges would have already been filed way before Candace um, filed them. You, you understand what I'm They would have filed charges the next day. You hear me? So miss me with all of that. Okay, miss me with all of that. And I was here for um, Candace's... Um, Mama Candace, Mama Dorothy sat at the table like this. Good, y'all can do all of that talking. Charges are already filed. I'm not here for it. We ain't got nothing. She said that eating her food, like, girl, we, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Mm -mm. The girl is going to court. <laughs> I was here for her. That was the whole episode, y'all. I know y'all gonna get in the comment section. You know I love the ah, good, ah, good about what we saw. Go ahead, let's do that. Let's talk about what we saw. Let's um get in there and discuss. I could be wrong. You could be wrong. We all could be wrong. But um, let's see what we got to say about it. Until next time, that's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.